Okay, this video is uh, over section 11.5, square root functions. Um, it's just going to be a quick homework help video. Hopefully, uh, as you finish up your homework for section 11.5, if you have any str or struggles or questions, uh, some of these problems might um, help assist you. With. Um, I've picked a few problems, a couple problems from this weekend's homework, and one problem from um, that I thought was a little bit challenging from last night's homework. And so. Uh, use these to, even if your question or one of the problems that you're struggling with isn't one of these examples, um, I think a lot of the strategies that I use to solve these problems can be applied um, to the other problems as well. So hopefully it is a benefit to you. Um, the first problem, I'm going to do one problem over finding the domain of a square root function, and the other two problems will be over graphing. Um, when we find the domain of, of a square root function, what we're trying to do, anytime we find the domain, we're really just narrowing down the field. We're, we're limiting our view of, of what we want to see for our x values, because domain is always x. Um, we know that you know, typically our x values can be any va value that we want, negative, positive, in between. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, but for the square root function, we found that um, if anytime we take a square root of a negative number, uh, that we're not able to compute that. And so we need to be able to set a domain then for this specific example that will avoid all negatives. Um, because we don't want to have the domain be everything uh, because we know for a fact that not every number works. So we're going to try to narrow the field down of, of all our possible numbers um, to just numbers that work. That's the whole purpose of domain. So if we know that everything inside here um, when we take 2, or excuse me, when we take a number for x, we plug it in, we add 4, then we multiply it by 2, what we know in order for it to work is that result has to be positive. Okay? So let me say that again. When we start with x and we add 4 to it, then we take that entire thing times 2. What we know is in order for it to work, that whole thing must be bigger than or equal to zero. This is important. This is how we're going to narrow down the field. Um, by saying it's got to be bigger than or equal to zero, we're saying it can't be a negative because we know that when, if we would, like the numbers that we do plug in when we add 4 and multiply by 2, if that were to give us a negative, there's no way then to take the square root. So when we're finding the domain, we're trying to find a way of taking everything that's underneath this radical sign and setting it greater than or equal to zero. We don't, this negative three really has no bearing on the domain, okay? Because when we apply the minus three, that's after we've taken the square root. So don't even look at that for now. We're just trying to set a domain, set a parameter. So now to solve this, we're going to take two times x and then two times four. We're going to distribute it, get two x plus eight. And then we bring our greater than or equal to zero right down. Now we subtract 8 from both sides. These cancel. We're left with 2x greater than or equal to negative 8. Now we divide by 2. We're left with x is greater than or equal to negative 4. So what we found out is that on our number line, any numbers bigger than or equal to negative 4 so all of the numbers on this side uh, will give us a positive value, or at least zero, um, underneath this radical, and we can take the square root of it. However, anything, and I'll draw it in red, but anything on this side will not work. So that's why we set this as greater than or equal to x minus, or x is greater than or equal to negative four. So that's what our domain is going to be. So we put it simply in. Um, oops, not zero, negative four. Um, domain notation, and we have our domain. Now let's look at a couple graphs. Um, this is question number 13. When we're graphing, we're going to want to build a t-chart. Um, but the thing about square roots is, could we pick um, pretty much any number, yes, but we know that it's got to be a number that's going to give us a positive value here. 
Um, but there's also some strategy to um, picking values for x. If we can pick a perfect square, or a value that we plug in for x, that when we take 4 minus whatever value that is, we get a perfect square, um, then we're going to be, it's going to be a lot easier to compute this. And so I'm going to list off some nice, um, easy numbers to take the square root of. We can take the square root of 0, zero the square root of 0 is 0. We can take the square root of 1 and get 1, square root of 4 get 2, and the square root of 9 and get 3. Those are easy numbers to take the square root of. So our goal is to try to plug a number in for x so that when we take 4 minus that number, we end up with 0. And so what number can we plug in there to get 4 minus that number to get 0? Well, that would be 4 because 4 minus 4 is 0. The next one we want it to total 1, so 4 minus what number gives us 1? That would be 3. And now we want it to be 4, so 4 minus, that would be 0, gives us 4. And then this one's a little bit tricky because we're actually going to try to increase here. And so if you think about it, if we plug a negative 5 in there, 4 minus negative 5, that would actually be plus then, and that would get us to 9. Now we can plug those values in and get our y value. So 4 minus 4 is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. 4 minus 3 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. 4 minus 0 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. And then 4 minus negative 5 is 9. And the square root of 9 is 3. Now we graph these. 4, 0. 3, 1. 0, 2 and negative 5, 3, and you will see that this radical actually opens up to the left. The reason for that, that we're going to learn over time, is this negative right here. It kind of causes the radical to open up to the left. Okay, the last example I'm going to do with you is um, question number 30. This is from your homework for this weekend, so this should be a benefit to everybody. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and pick some strategic numbers. Um, this one, I picked it because of all of these minuses and negatives. Uh, this kind of looks confusing to start off with. But really, once we separate it and kind of uh, think about it a little bit, I, I think you're going to find that this is pretty easy. What we're really doing and what we need to focus on first is find, picking a good value to plug in for x so that when we find the square root of that value, um, it's nice, neat, and easy. Well, because there's nothing underneath there, we can just pick 0, 1, 4, and 9. Because we know that the square root of 0 is 0. Square root of 1 is 1. 4 is 2. Square root of three, 9 is 3. And so when we plug those in, now we have to consider this negative 1 and the minus. So the square root of 0 gives us 0. Negative 1 minus 0 is just negative 1. The square root of 1 is 1. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. The square root of 4, that would give us 2 here. The square root of 4 is 2. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. And then the square root, when we plug a 9 in there, of the square root of 9 is 3. Negative 1 minus 3. Now we graph this, 0, negative 1, 1, negative 2, um, 4, negative 3, and 9, negative 4. And as you can see, this one actually opens up a complete reflection of what we're used to. Normally, we're used to ones that open up like that. This has been reflected over the x-axis. The reason for that is this negative out in front of the radical sign. I hope that helps you um, with your understanding on section 11.5. We'll talk more about this on Tuesday. So good luck.